Well, it's mid-April, and it's about time I do my April garden tour. What we're doing right now is we're prepping our garden. This is the wall. We have not done nothing with this. We, what we're trying to do is get out what we don't want, and I'm going to stake up those tomatoes. This is the red Swiss chard that I grow. It's really interesting because I have two types growing. I have one that's got like a red vein, and then I've got this one that's so dark and so purple red, so beautiful. So I really like that one, but you know, I like them both. So anyways, there we've got beans growing there, and then we've got the moringa is coming back. It kind of died off all winter and it's coming back now. That's where I compost in place. I still have some of the zucchini. It's old, but this is last year's zucchini. We're gonna get new ones growing. This one came up in my compost bin and I left it all winter. So I'll probably just leave that right now until I get to the wall and what we decide to do. See, here's the other Swiss chard we grow. And this one is green, but it's got red stems. It's very interesting. That sow thistle, we leave that right now until we plant because all the California goldfinches, they just love it. So we leave it, it, it provides, provides them food to feed their babies and that's what they're doing right now. They're nesting. As an eggplant that came up from seed, probably came out of the compost bin, I left it and I grew a yellow eggplant. So that one is ripe. I can split that one at any time, open and plant it when I'm ready. Right now I'm not going to. That's the truck bed, and that's the truck bed that we grew all that spaghetti squash in a few years ago. We had like 50 or more spaghetti squash. Right now we have an avocado tree coming up and more of that Swiss chard that's got the red vein and red Swiss chard in there. See, there's two types you could probably see. In there it's really, really red, and then on the other side it's got the red vein. That's just the way it grew. And then I've got some radish seeds in there that have gone to seed. So I'm gonna pick those seeds. Gary's working on sifting wood chips right now. As you can see, let's walk over here, see what he does. He has his cart under here and he sifts the wood chips and then he can use it to top off the beds as we're prepping them. Keep in mind, we have not planted anything new yet for spring. It's not that we're late. A lot of the plants we plant here, the squash, pumpkins, all that, they, they really like the hot weather and we've cooled down again. We went from a hot winter to a little bit cool. So we are getting ready. We, we can be growing up until December. So we're getting ready for this. We're prepping it now. Here's another one of my bins that I compost in place. See how far down they drop? You load it up with all kinds of leaves and kitchen scraps and it drops. So I'm gonna be filling that up. There's a little bit of eggshell there. You can still see a little bit of eggshell. But the main thing I put this here for was it was feeding this papaya tree. This is the papaya tree that never grew any papayas. And once I set up that, it started producing lots of papayas. So I'll probably end up putting some squash in there, some sort in the bin. Another little papaya tree. Oh, this is funny. You know what this is? These are orange trees. When we eat oranges, we've been dropping the seeds in there. And as long as the orange seeds do not dry out, you can grow them. So we got orange trees growing in there. We'll see what we'll do with those later. Uh, mint is all over here. It's starting to come back. A lot of mint does not like the winter. Kind of dies back a little bit. Depends on the mint, there's more papayas. And of course, here's that big papaya tree. Look at that. We have been harvesting papayas all winter. We've had a lot of papayas. And again, here's another one of those bins I've got. I compost in place. You can still see some eggshells. And it just feeds this papaya. Now we are having a problem with this tree. It is so heavy, Gary's trying to figure out if he's going to build a mountain around it and try to stand it up or what we're going to do with it, but it's, it's leaning, it's so heavy. There's another bin. See, I even throw the leaves in from the papaya tree and that breaks down and when you fill it with water or water it, it feeds the roots next to the tree. Oh, my bottle brush. Isn't that beautiful? Gary planted that. It was a seedling that came up in our yard because we have the big mother tree 
and he brought the seedling tree here, the bottle brush tree, and it's just growing beautiful. Rosemary, of course. Something sleeps in the rosemary here at night. Probably coyotes. It could be raccoons, though. Okay, all the citrus trees down there. I'm not going down there. Celery still coming up in a bucket. Here is one of those compost bins that I do, and I'm getting ready to plant in there. See how he's put the sifted wood chips on top? So all I have to do is now move it and maybe put some potting soil or something in there if I want and start planting in there, or I could try to plant right the way it is. Or I could move it over the wood chips and dump in kitchen scraps, you know, your coffee grinds, your, your eggshells and leftovers from vegetables and stuff. I'll, I'll see what happens when I get to it. Not sure yet what I'm gonna do. Again, an old Swiss chard plant, and it's growing beautiful. I just love this plant, look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? We have eggs and vegetables with that all the time. Put it in our eggs. A little moringa tree. That one got cut off at the base and then grew back. Something ate it, probably a rabbit, and then it grew back. And these are more bins. I do a lot of composting in place and I'm getting ready to figure out what I'm gonna do in here. As you can see, a lot of these are in pots. I just lift the pot out and plant some seedlings in there. I could either plant plants or put some seeds in there. And the papaya tree, we're gonna leave that right now. The peppers are coming, making a comeback. That's an old tomato plant that I'm staking up. I'll see if I'm gonna keep it or replace it with new. And here's my strawberry. Ooh, I'm gonna leave my cutters out here. I've already lost cutters before. That's a strawberry uh, tower and I'm working on that. So I'll have to get some more strawberry plants in there. Again, here's that Swiss chard with the red vein. See? And that's growing in a compost bin. And I'll get more, something else in there too. I'm not sure yet what. This is the collard. And this collard plant, of course, left the pot a long time ago. And it's so big and so cool. I mean, even if we don't eat that much collard, collard leaves make the best compost. Uh, the plants love it. You can make compost tea out of collard leaves and everything. My walking onions are just starting to walk. See, they're getting ready to walk. They're gonna have babies. That's a tree collard and it is in a pot and I'm debating where I'm gonna put it. But right now I water that and it waters my compost bin. You can see my other videos on how I do that and how these pots keep the compost bins alive. Not the plants, the compost alive. Another tower I am getting ready and I've had a few of you request you want to see me build one, so I'll see if I can find the time to do it. Because it's really neat, because what I do is I put something on top and I compost in place on top, and it will feed the entire tower as it's here. And then again, we've got different kale in there. We've got curly kale red, and another one that looks like dinosaur kale, but it's got purple. We had bok choy, but that, as you can see, went to seed and there's mustard in there. And what I'm gonna do there is that bin is ready to go. See how big that kale is in the back here? Well, that kale, this one, is set its roots down out of the pot in there because it, it's just getting so much nutrition from the compost in place. So I'll probably move a couple of those and maybe leave that one right now. There's five pots in there. So all I have to do is remove one pot, put it somewhere else, and start planting seeds. Probably squash. I'm working on these bins and getting ready. As you can see here, I'm cleaning up the garden. There's all kinds of leaves. There's, I see banana peels in there and even old eggplant, different things. Kitchen scraps are in there. And what I'll do very soon is Gary will put some sifted wood chips on top. If you don't have wood chips, you can use potting soil. You can buy some cheap potting soil from the store and do the same thing afterwards, or you can use grass clippings, whatever you want. This is a Swiss chard. I leave this here, even though the leaves are quite small, it's growing in a bucket because every morning, it's so cute. All the wild birds come and they're hanging, hanging out on here and they're the ones that are chewing up the leaves. See how the leaves are chewed? Since they picked this plant and they haven't really been bothering too many of the other plants, I will leave this Swiss chard and let them do what they want with it. So hopefully they'll leave the other ones alone. I do have a kale down there. I had a cover with one of those trash bins. 
because the rabbits were chewing on it. So it's getting there and I'll be uncovering it soon. See the walking onion is walking here too. See the little lump there? Let me see if I can show you. See this? That's a baby walking onion. And here's another one starting. So they're starting to walk and I'll be spreading those around as the babies come. I'll be putting them more places. My, let's see, purple kale. Oh, I love that. It's actually red kale. That's my old kale. Somebody looked at it a while back and said, it's so old, your curly kale. Get it out. Get it out. No. Just get rid of the leaves that are bad and leave it because we eat from that every day. Look how beautiful it is. Nope. I'll leave it. And then, of course, like I said, this is the red kale, which is quite beautiful. We had some wind really blowing. Let me put my cutters down here. I don't want to lose it. And boy, it did cause a little bit of damage, but it was really, really hard the other day. Blew off some of the flowers from the eggplant. The wind was so bad. But anyways, this eggplant is still full of eggplants. And I do have to get them off. If I don't get them off soon, I'll lose the plant because the plant will think it was very successful and it will die. So got to get them off. My pumps are not working right now because it's very cloudy, a great time to film, so I don't get the glare from the sun. And uh, let's see, what's back here? Oh, here I found that blue tub. I, I know I always say don't plant in the clear pots. They don't last. They don't, but they make nice little greenhouses. And I've got some squash seeds in there right now. As soon as they start to grow, I'll uncover it. So that's just to protect it so the birds don't eat the baby. Uh, seedlings as they come up. Some more tree, co tree collars. There's one there and one over there. I got another curly kale from probably two years now. Here, I'll leave it. Let's see what's here. Oh, I've got some more sow thistle. That's a weed. You know, we actually eat the leaves. It's very similar to dandelion, and we do put that in our eggs in the morning. But right now, we're leaving the seeds so the goldfinches can come in and eat the seeds. Down there we got garlic chives, again more walking onions, walking onions everywhere. And they're walking. Okay, sorrel, red bean sorrel, celery. You'll see celery everywhere. It grows here like a weed. Literally, it comes up everywhere, whether I want it there or not. On the bottom here we have spearmint. Again, more walking onions. Let's see if we can swing around here. I had mustard. Can you believe the rabbits have decided? Oh no, this isn't mustard, I'm sorry. This is, um, oh my gosh, it'll come to me, it'll come, rocket, this is rocket. And um, the rabbits decided, oh, it's good for you. No, it's good for me, I was eating it every day. But we do have the flowers, and the flowers are very good. Mmm, very sweet, very, very, oh, really good. Okay, this all has to be taken out, I'm going to redo this. I'll probably separate a lot of the onions here and start getting that in the ground. That is broadleaf parsley back there growing with some more garlic chives. And that's sage, nothing in the back pot. These are beans. They came back up uh, just recently. And then I've got sweet potatoes, again, more walking onions. This was bok choy and it went to seed. And that's um, a bean of some sort back here. We've got those all over. Gary bought them at the Indian market, planted them everywhere, and they're growing everywhere. Tomatoes, old tomatoes, and that, that one I'm just doing some cuttings and then I'll probably um, stick them around. Those are just cuttings in a glass jar with water of tomato plants. And we've got this, like I said, celery coming up everywhere, whether we like it or not, and collard. That's a weed on the bottom. This is broccoli. Mmm, so good. This is broccoli, but this is actually a cross between broccoli and collard. And the reason I know it is the leaves get quite big. They almost look like collard when it starts to grow. See? It hybridized, and I thought I was going to save the seeds, but I just threw them around. Let them grow. That's okay, but it is a cross. Let's see, I said spearmint on the bottom here. There's an old zucchini that will be coming out soon. Look at the tomatoes. Yeah, look at the big tomatoes back here. We've got little tomatoes and tomatoes everywhere. This plant is from last year. And I was getting ready to pull it out, get to prep the garden so we can start planting. And lifted it up a couple weeks ago. Got some post. And 
after I put the posts in, I started using string at first, and then it was just, I can't stand using string. I got string all over the garden that's broke. It breaks within weeks. I started putting it up with masking tape, and it worked out so good. I've got this whole thing up in one, two, three, using masking tape. You can see my videos on that. I tell you exactly how I'm doing it. And it, I was using it last year. I've been using it. I just never really gave it a lot of thought. This is an electric water pump. That's why that's working right now. But I just put the whole thing up, and all I have to do is every oh, every three, four days, I got to come back and restring it because it's getting so big, and it's getting big because it's got a major root system because it's last year's tomato plant. There's two of them in there, two tomato plants, and that's all oh, two tomato plants in there. So let's see. Another little papaya down there, more red Swiss chard down there. I have a carrot down here. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can get you in there. Hey, there's a carrot. So we got a carrot growing in there, and let's see, that's a curry herb plant that's growing there. And that's growing inside with the tomato plant. And it looks like I've got some radish seeds that went to seed there. Radish plant that went to seed. Uh, peppers. This is the black peppers and they turn red when they're ripe. I'm leaving it right now because I'm not going to actually use it. I'm going to bust that open and start planting the seeds when I'm ready. So let it stay on the mother plant. That's fine with me. Again, here's that dinosaur kale looking stuff. But it's kind of a purple vein, which is really nice. Something's eating this. Probably the birds, so I left it. Little tomato plant I staked up with masking tape. It's got a tomato on it, so we'll see what happens. I'll probably end up taking it out, but I'll leave it right now. More garlic chives, more pepper plants. See, that's actually making a comeback. Got to trim more of these leaves off and cut the plant back. And then I want to actually get some more wood chips or maybe some more kitchen scraps in there, pile it in there, and then cover it with wood chips or something. Another one of these broccoli plants that are not really true sprouting broccoli. It's a hybrid. It, it, I planted it. It crossed with the uh, colored, and that's fine. It tastes good. It doesn't grow as good as the sprouting broccoli because the heads are a little bit slimmer looking, but it's still, it's still good. It's still really good. And again, colored in here. And that's a lavender plant. I don't know. It doesn't look that good. I'm going to go find some place to plant it in the ground. A tomato plant. See, I'm leaving an eggplant there. I'm going to split that open, cut it up, and slice it up and just throw it in the ground. This is, I believe, goji berry. An avocado seed grew. There's still onions in there and more Swiss chard. Let's see. You know, everything in my garden, I should say. You may say, oh, this is terrible. You know, you got to be planting new. Everything that you can see is edible except for the geraniums, which some people say are edible. I'm not eating them. But everything growing in here, everything is edible. So we have plenty of food. I planted a couple little geraniums, and yes, it grew really big there, and then it spread over here. But I did not plant anything that wasn't edible. So this entire garden, everything you see is edible. This is the sprouting broccoli. And these grow really nice heads. Now it is going to seed. As you can see, see the heads are different, they're fuller. And they're, they're thicker and you can use them for stir fry. It's a little bit different where the other ones, the hybrid with the collard plant is slimmer. So they, they don't grow as full. But now it's hard to tell because I did let them flower. And I'll collect some seeds and throw them around, that's fine. Or the birds will eat the seeds too. See, here's the collard plants. And this is their seed pods because they're flowering too. And the flowers, if you look, this is a collared flower, see, and this is a broccoli flower. And if you look, let me see if I can pick one. It's really so close. They, they look identical. It's the same family, so they hybridize really easy. So you got to be careful when you get seeds from somebody that they're not growing a bunch of plants in the same family, or you won't get true. <laughs> this is a strawberry mint. Look at that. A strawberry mint. Let's see if you can see that. And I bought this. It was a little tiny plant. I bought this quite a few months ago. It's gotten really big and I split it already. And I put it in here and I gave a chunk to my sister. Hopefully she can keep it alive. 
does it smell oh it smells so good so I've been kind of babying that and a lot of times I throw something over it but right now it's you know I use a lot of these baskets so the rabbits won't get it and right now nothing's been bothering it so I left the basket off but they smell so good what's growing here in the ground see if you can see that that's chocolate mint and that's fine because it's it's in my path and it's not bothering anything and when you walk it smells so good when you step on it I've got both orange and chocolate growing around here they kind of left their pots and you know what some people said it's so hard to take out we've had areas where we needed to take it out and it was really nothing to take out it was one two three so I have no problems with it growing we use so much mint more so in the summer because they make a lot of mint tea all day we drink so we use a lot of mint and that's my strawberry tower the plants are making a comeback but I do want to get some more strawberries see I stuck one in there and it's growing and so I got to get more strawberries in there old celery I'll probably have to get out these are more dinosaur kale that was under here it was covered because the rabbits will eat it sometimes more walking onions see I got walking onions everywhere they're walking they're walking well they're starting it will still take a while they'll reach the top they'll burst open and all the babies will be there it's so much fun okay dinosaur kale on this side oh this is the purple sprouting broccoli I have it covered because I don't want anything to eat it and now it's taking off I left it on my deck so they kind of got stunt it was my fault I should have moved them and I didn't and they were in a container that was too small but now it's just taking off they don't look purple so it'll be interesting to see what happens when it starts to grow broccoli but right now it turned green it was purple they were all purple the plants were actually purple when they were babies now it's turned green and these are dinosaur kale they're old I just have to trim it back but again even the dinosaur kale leaves that's gold to me that's the greatest compost it can make you can make compost tea out of it you can just put it in your compost piles that I make I do my compost in place in it's just got so much nutrients in it you can see the plants just take off from it I really love dinosaur and collard dinosaur kale and collard for composting here's curly curly kale another older plant and there's lemon verbena start coming back now for the summer a little tiny bit of chocolate mint and then again these are more dinosaur kale these are cuttings all you have to do is cut a piece off stick it in the ground you don't have to baby it or anything and they just take off oh there's a little water fountain we have water features everywhere again check my other videos it's so important it brings the birds in and the birds eat your insects the bad insects when we brought in the water features it brought the birds in and when the birds came in they started getting rid of all the small little tomato hornworms and all the other insects they do the best you don't have to spray it's we haven't bought any spray we're not buying any spray the birds do everything if you end up with a little bit, bit of aphids aphids or white fly just take your hose and spray it off and that's it they're really simple to get rid of but anything else the birds come in and they will help you you really 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 need birds in the garden and I, I mean I swear by it. I've got like five or six different water features I built this this morning and um, I'm still playing around with how I want it but it's just it's changed our lives it really has changed our lives because the birds are doing the work now they're such a joy to watch and yes if they eat a couple plants they find a plant they like let them have it believe you me they deserve it uh, the windstorm snapped this the other day as you can see here no big deal right now the plant is still hanging on fine but what we'll end up doing is you can just take big cuttings and just um, take the big cuttings stick them in the ground you know cut it right like that stick it in the ground they'll grow so we'll probably trim some of that off Gary said he's going to trim some of it off and put it in his garden that's his garden down there with the bananas and everything and sweet potatoes sweet potatoes and everything he's got growing in there but he said he'll take some of the dinosaur kale and we'll kind of trim that down and then of course we've got uh, I've got oregano back there under the basket so the rabbits won't eat it I get those trash cans from dollar stores and sometimes I get bigger ones at thrift stores 
So there, that's really nice to get because it really works. Just drop it on top, they last forever. Celery growing everywhere. This is a carrot top I stuck in there and it's growing and it's probably gonna go to seed. I'll have seeds from the carrot top. Um, more collard growing, more oregano. Of course the onion's coming up through here. This is the purple sprouting broccoli. So we'll see what happens with that. It's starting to take off. They kind of got stunt because I left them on the deck and they weren't really happy. And I thought I was gonna lose them, but I haven't lost any. So we'll see what happens. Let's see, I'm still working on here, another compost in place bin. So I'll be throwing around. See, I brought my bucket in, out here and I've been tossing from kitchen, from the kitchen. Uh, like I said, coffee grinds, everything. I've been tossing that around and I just put it in there and cover it up or leave it on top. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna, see these are cuttings. Just stick them in there and then I can move them anywhere I want. Dinosaur kale, just move it anywhere. Chocolate mint. Uh, more dinosaur kale cuttings that I can find places to grow and here I, we haven't really started anything there's a little bit of tomatoes left but it will probably be taking that out peppers they came up in there so we got peppers growing and we'll probably trim that back and let it grow didn't really do anything here yet I'm, well, I haven't done anything anywhere we're trying to clear green sorrel got the regular sorrel celery see what we did here I've got tomatillos I've got some here and I think I've got some I thought I had some here, maybe not, okay. But uh, this is a tomatillo, and if you throw them around, they'll just grow. So I'm getting ready to figure out where I want this. I don't have to save seeds, I just save that. It's really interesting. Bring them in the house, sit them on the counter, and they'll mold. A lot of vegetables and fruits will do that. Leave them outside in the air somewhere, and I have found they don't mold. They, they look old, but they don't mold. Something about the outdoors, Mother Nature knows how to take care of it. And again, baby celery. So anyways, I will be growing tomatillos out of that tomatillo. This is a lettuce that went to seed. I left it. See all the seeds that did fall and they're growing? And then I've got some wild grass seeds growing. In here, I've got celery and some curly kale. This is a very interesting plant. I had my nursery get it for me. This is a mushroom plant. And I think it's an Asian plant. It tastes so good in stir fry, and you can put it in salad too. It's green, and yet it tastes like mushrooms, so it's really fun. I've got two. I've got one here, and I've got one here. See the label down there? Let's see if I can show you the label. Got that last year. It weathered really nice all winter out here. Didn't have to baby it or anything. These are old peppers that have to be taken out. Fig trees I don't want. I don't know what kind of fig trees they are. I don't know what Gary's gonna do with them or I'll just we'll pull them out, toss them out. An old pepper down there and another dinosaur kale that was probably just stuck in there, a cutting and it took off. This is sprouting broccoli. I had a little one on my deck and it wasn't doing anything. See, it's starting now. So I decided to bring it over here and stick it in here and it's taken off. A pepper down there from last year. So we'll decide what we're gonna do. My lemon verbena is coming back. After our winter, it's growing and I'll be trimming that. That's my rat. <clears throat> That's the, so you don't poke your eye out on any of these steaks, see? See? I do that with a lot of my steaks. If it looks like it's in an area that you're gonna poke your eye out or you can get hurt on it, then I just stick a stuffed animal or something on top. I learned that from my dad. He went outside once at night to fix a racing track I had, <laughs> and he went to get a piece of metal, and in the dark, he bent down, and he ended up at the hospital getting stitches because he didn't know he had a bar outside, a metal bar, and he went straight into it. He's okay, but I learned a lesson on that. I'll never forget that, and I must have been about seven years old, but I still remember it. Yeah, somebody walked by and said, hello. <laughs> Here I have lettuce growing. And I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna move the lettuce somewhere else. We did so well with ginger. I had ginger growing in here. That was the video I did on that ginger. All that ginger came out of here. I still have ginger in here. We have not harvested. See, it's full of ginger in here. So I haven't harvested yet. I'm probably gonna take that out, put some more pieces in there, and then freeze what I wanna keep and plant what I wanna plant. As far as the stevia, this is stevia, and these are seeds. 
I do not grow stevia from seed. I haven't really tried, but let me see if I can move this. It all came back from the roots. See that? The roots sent up all new stevia. This is some lemon verbena I gotta go plant. So I'm gonna grow stevia along the back here since it did so well. This is all stevia growing. And I'm going to set up ginger and turmeric here. Uh, it worked so well for me. It's, and they don't need a lot of room. Turmeric and ginger actually like being confined. So I'm gonna put pots up here and grow all my turmeric and ginger here. The lettuce is okay, but I had a little, a couple issues with, yes, rats will get up on top and nibble, but they don't care for the ginger or turmeric or the stevia. So that's why I'm gonna change it. I'm setting up lettuce somewhere else and I won't have to put baskets over it. So for now, I'm gonna be moving that and then I'm gonna be replanting. This is an old basil plant that is coming back. I'll probably trim it back. Keep in mind, I have done nothing yet as far as new planting for the spring. Look at this. This is what we have all night. <laughs> Sorry for the swing, the swing you around. So I am, we are prepping, we are getting ready. It's not like we have to rush and do everything brand new right now because everything will grow all winter. I'm sorry, all spring, all summer, all fall into the winter. We don't have a problem with that until we get really cold, which is like what, January, February? So we don't have to worry about that. So we're right now prepping on what we wanna do. But I am staking things that are still here and the tomatoes were still growing. They grew all year up, up into even now. And I decided to stake them up. As you can see, I staked them up with the masking tape. And they're doing really good. They've got new flowers. They've got new tomatoes. Look at that. So I will see if I'm going to pull my old tomatoes out or leave them. I'm going to start recomposting in my compost and place bins. This, by the way, is peppermint. This is a fig tree that needs a home. I got to figure out where I'm going to plant it. It's a cutting. It's actually a cutting I did from a different fig tree I've got that I really like and it worked so good. But anyways, that's a peppermint. So I'm gonna see what we're gonna do with that. But what, see how it, it falls down? Once you compost and the season's over, it falls. So you may have it up to here, but it's gonna go down. The plants are gonna pull it, it's gonna compact, it's gonna break down. It's supposed to, that's the way Mother Nature works. That's why she keeps dropping and dropping leaves. So today I came out, see what I dumped? Yes, there's orange peels in there. It makes homes for the worms. And there's eggshells in there. There's eggplant and banana peels. And there are coffee grinds. And who knows, there might even be some bits and pieces of chicken in there. Whatever I had in the house got dumped in here. And then I'll end up covering with something. And then I can plant something else here. If I plant a new tomato plant, and it takes off faster than this thing, then this thing can go and the new tomato plant will stay. I'll see. And that's all I do. I don't have to do anything else, just cover it. I haven't done anything with my swimming pools in the front yet. I still have broccoli growing. And again, there's, uh, let's see, there's garlic chives and walking onions, sow thistle back there. I'm leaving that again for the birds. But look at that. The only thing here that's not edible would be again, a little bit of the geraniums that I planted for looks for flowers. Uh, onions, sorrow, celery that died back, more green sorrow. I think this is baby Swiss chard. I threw some seeds there. And onions. I really need to do a video on failures. This was a failure. Should do a video on what I'm not doing again. Um, there's red vein sorrow. This is what I can swing around and show you. This is what I'm working on. And this will be lettuce growing, hopefully, all summer. See how we put the bricks? It doesn't get direct sunlight, so it doesn't get too warm. They shouldn't bolt too fast. And I should be able to grow lettuce all through here. Nothing has gotten up here. So I don't have to worry about covering anything. And the holes are not on the bottom. See where the holes are, where the water leaks down? And if I wanted to, I can plant something here and let, down here and let it catch the water. I don't know. But right now I'm working on deciding how I want to set this up. I've got some mustard growing here. This grew all winter. I set this up and it grew beautiful. 
This is amazing because this I bought at the store. I still have to take all these extra leaves off. This I bought at the store as lettuce, organic lettuce, and then I cut the bottoms off, you know, like you would just cut, and I stuck it in the ground and it regrew. It's pretty much at the end of its life, but we had multiple salads from that all year off of lettuce I bought at the grocery store and then restuck it in here and it regrew. These are going to seed because they've been in here all winter and the weather warmed up a little bit. So they're sending a message. It's time to go to seed. I'll collect those seeds. I'll spread them around. That's bok choy that went to seed. And then there's mustard still growing in there. So this is my new setup. We'll see how this goes. Chamomile tea. Ooh, that was fun. And now it went to seed. Isn't that pretty? They look like daisies. I'll be collecting the seed and growing chamomile from that. Again, this is romaine lettuce that is going to seed. And then again, dinosaur kale, a piece broke off. I stuck it right in there. It's growing. And this is some red leaf lettuce. They look skimpy, but see, if you look, you'll see we're, we're taking it off and we're using it all the time. So I don't just pick the whole lettuce head. I just go through and pick what I need. <clears throat> Oh, I got dust. <laughs> um, I just pick what I need and then use it. And that's why they're, see, they're skimpy because we're picking off as we need it, not just killing the plant. So the plant will grow and we pick off as we need it. So that is my April tour. And like I said, we have not done anything yet. We're just getting ready to get everything going so we can start planning and find things we want to grow. So again, I'm done with my tour. I'm sorry it doesn't look too much better than last month, but you gotta keep in mind, even though it doesn't look like much and it's April, see there's plants there. Everything that your eye can see, except for the geranium, everything is edible. So we have had more than enough food all year. It's all edible. We had all kinds of greens. We could do all kinds of stuff with them. I can make them, you know, different types of chips out of kale and and colored and everything that makes great chips. And then we had broccoli all year. Of course, plenty of collard. He's made wraps out of them as well. Vegetables, just cut them up and eat them that way. You know, so whatever we, we wanted to do, it's not like we ever ran out of food. Everything made it. So it's not like, oh my gosh, spring is here. I have to go plant. We had, we had tomatoes all year, and so I want to get my plants going. We've had broccoli all year. Look at the hummingbirds. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at that. I could just sit here all day. It is so nice to come out here in the morning and start your day and just watch the hummingbirds. Look at that. Okay, now I'm boring, you guys. Isn't that amazing? I've got to answer questions on that too. People have asked me, how do you get the hummingbirds to come? I'll tell you real quick. See that feeder over there? That would be not the way to make your hummingbirds come. That feeder is hidden in the bushes there. A hummingbird flying by will not see that. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do before you have hummingbirds feeding, if you can't get them to come, is hang it out in the open. So when they're flying by, believe it or not, these hummingbirds know feeders. And as they're flying through the hills or flying down the neighborhood, they see a feeder, they will come. And then once you've got them in your yard, then you can place them wherever you want, in between the plants and all different places. But in the beginning, you need to get your hummingbird feeders way out in the open so they can see it. And once you've got them, they will come and they will look. Then they'll start hunting. But again, everything you see is edible. So it's not like we have to rush and get all our spring stuff in. But I am excited. I can't wait to start working in the garden and getting more things. I want to get things I have not done before or have not really worked on. Lettuce was one. I had lettuce growing in different places, but I actually am quite excited to put it on the side of the house there and then have it more in the shade and see if I can get it to grow all summer. Definitely want to get more, more um, ginger growing. I couldn't believe how much I grew out of like two tiny little pieces. So with that, have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.